Hello, everyone. My name is Andy Lefton. I am a lead 3D generalist, and I've been working in the industry for approximately 15 years now, give or take. Um, I want to take this chance to give a shout out to Matthias and everyone at Maxon. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity of coming back. Um, it's been a while. I believe the last time I was here was 2015. So uh, again, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I'd like to go over a recent project I did through Mad Microbe Studios, but first I'm going to show you my demo reel and then we will continue. All right, cool. Thanks for checking that out. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's let's get to it here. Um, so I wanted to uh, kind of explain what we're going to be checking out here. Uh, and as I mentioned, I work as a lead 3D generalist at Mad Microbe Studios. And for those of you not familiar with Mad Microbe, um, we work in the realm of science and medical animation. Um, and it's a fascinating world to work in because you get to have the opportunity to kind of work in these cellular micro alien worlds is how I like to kind of look at them. Um, so you get a lot of creative license, and um, it's always fun to see, uh, you know, the outcome of, of how you create these little worlds. Um, but anyway, I kind of want to discuss what we're going to be checking out here. Um, a couple months ago, we kind of had a roundtable discussion that we wanted to make a kind of a company stinger. And for those of you not familiar, a stinger is like a like a brand identification. Um, so just something that's going to reveal uh, the company logo. Um, so as you'll see, Mad Microbe does have a logo, and um, we were given the task of uh, building this, you know, this stinger, and it could be 10 seconds or 30 seconds, and I decided to take the 30 second route. Um, but we're going to go through the process of how I created it, um, and so we're going to check that out right now. Okay, so that was the project. And again, like I mentioned, I started that a couple months ago and then in my spare time kind of built it up to where it is now. So uh, what we're gonna do now is just kind of, you know, start, you know, going through the process of how I did this. So um, with that, let's go ahead and jump into our next steps. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, as I mentioned before, obviously we have a logo at Mad Microbe. And so when this was presented for the idea, um, you kind of get a sense of, um, you know, right off the bat, something organic, um, something alive, and um, something, I don't know, it could be murky, it could be whatever you wanted it to be. But you're seeing spores, you kind of see the spores here, um, obviously, you know, obviously some kind of tethered tissue or um, fibers of some sort. So that's the first thing I saw. And honestly, it really struck a chord with me. So I just ran with it. So I didn't have much time to kind of throw stuff together, but I wanted to make sure that the process was smooth um, because time was of the essence. So obviously we wanted to start with the concept and looking at the company logo, you kind of start to get an idea um, of where you want to go with this. Um, the visualization, um, you know, I kind of started to um, get an idea of, you know, how is this going to build? How much time do we need for it to build? You know, and, and is the message going to be clear once we get to the end? Uh, and then, you know, I went ahead and built out some style frames, which we're going to go over. And then we have the storyboard. Um, so it's a pretty basic layout here. Um, but, you know, I pretty much got all this done within a weekend, uh, give or take. So I knew what I was looking at, brainstormed, you know, over 24 hours of what I wanted. And, you know, I kind of came up with um, 
you know, we got style frames here. So considering the name of the company, Mad Microbe, you think microbe. So I was like, well, you know, I want something like a seedling or something that's going to kind of, you know, create this life, this evolution, if you will. So I just put this stuff together and I know in the company logo, we kind of have these, these like little spores that kind of, you know, pop up or exist. Uh, you know, no real reason. They're just there. We know there's life. So, um, I kind of started building out some ideas um, of how I wanted to look. And I know we're kind of going with a red theme, um, but, and these are early. Uh, I just wanted to get like an idea of, you know, an emission color, you know, how, you know, do we want to go bioluminescent? Um, and so it was kind of torn between two worlds. Um, so keep it organic, keep some sense of bioluminance and luminance, but you know, not overkill it. Um, and so I just kind of threw these together over a weekend and these were really roughed out. Um, and as you've seen, why I obviously went more of a, a vessel approach on this. I was going to go kind of, a, you know, again, bioluminescent kind of fiber thing, but um, I don't know. I felt like it was a little overkill on that. So I put these together over a weekend. Um, and then with that, I kind of started to move into the storyboard um, phase of this. And you know, this is rough, but I did this um, kind of like, as I mentioned, we have this, this microbe, if you will. Um, it kind of plants itself and then we have this kind of evolution life forming um, and this is kind of where I went to the quickly sketched out some kind of vessels if you will um, so this is kind of where everything came from and then I obviously wanted to come to the end where we're kind of building up you know we're flying through crevices we're you know watching this build happen uh, and then we get to the end where we're kind of in this wider more of a macro kind of shot um, and we reveal the logo, uh, and it's, you know, it's alive, it's moving around and it's pumping or, you know, what have you. Uh, and then, you know, we all have the, the company logo at the end. Um, so that was the process. Uh, again, this probably took me just a couple days to, you know, really get it down. Um, and then I just hit the ground running with that. So with that, why don't we go ahead and start to get into our, um, the, our, our C4D, you know, kind of start laying out some visualization um, and you can see how the process went from there. So with that, let's let's get over there. OK, so now that we're in cinema, we are going to start. Um, so basically what I did is that I didn't want to overthink how this was going to be set up. So I really wanted to, you know, keep things within the box, if you will, um, and just, you know, not really overthink how we were going to approach this. So uh, basically what I did is I started out getting our landscape going, um, just kind of visualized how I wanted this to be. Um, I know we wanted a distressed surface, uh, and so I started with a landscape object, and they were great because there you have it. Um, so what I did is that I turned off the sea level here, um, just so we could kind of have uh, distress and displacement on the edges as well. And this is a good starting point because you already have your you know kind of detail that you want. So what I did is I kind of adjusted some of the scale. Um, I remember I upped the segments as well to about 150 give or take um and you know you're already getting some detail there um and since our camera is going to be kind of living a little low here it's good to um, have that uh, and you don't really need to overkill on displacement etc so that's pretty cool right there we can even probably afford to bump that up a little more since we uh scaled it um so right right out of the start here um i know that our camera is going to be low and I'm going to need a horizon here. So what I did is uh, I went right into Cinema's sculpting tools um, without really having to sculpt, um, if you catch my drift. So I'll show you here. So I'm going to make this landscape editable because we need to kind of move these polys around. So what I did is that I just went right into the sculpt tools um, without having to subdivide or, you know, get into the sculpting program of Cinema. I just grabbed the tools themselves, um, just kind of played with the settings a little bit. and. Uh, you know, I knew I kind of wanted a backdrop behind this landscape. Um, another goal too was to repurpose this geometry, if you will. Uh, and what I mean by that is that, you know, each scene, I want to be able to use the same uh, geometry here uh, without having to rebuild every time. So it was kind of cool that I could, you know, have this one universal plane um, that we could be living on. And then all I would have to do uh, is, you know, maybe obviously change the camera, change the lighting, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And so that came in very, very, very handy. Um, so, you know, it's kind of how I went, you know, obviously I spent more time getting more detail, but um, that was, you know, basically the gist of it there. Um, and then as we know, we kind of have these, you know, we have our hero seedling, you know, but we also had kind of other seedlings, you know, at least a hint of them coming down. And so I continued with the tools here, kind of played around with sizes. And we know that there's kind of these divots, um, if you will, 
where these spores kind of live. And so I kind of did something like that. I mean, it was really that easy. And then again, you know, as I went on, I did, you know, utilize a little bit more uh, tools here. The inflate tool is great for creating kind of, kind of like this, the rim um, kind of inflation. And then, you know, later on, once we get into shading, um, th these really pop. Um, so it was really cool to kind of get that effect. Um, and, you know, you have something within a matter of minutes uh, that's pretty much usable. So uh, with that, you know, we have our, our spores that are going to be kind of popping out of there. So um, let's kind of like jump over to that. Okay, so we're going to start with just a simple little polygon here. Grab this guy. We're going to change our width down to 50. We are going to change our height down to 50. And then our segments, we're going to just put it one. So we have this little lonely polygon. Um, I'm going to hit C on the keyboard so we can make this polygon editable. Now we can do something with it. So what we want this to do is our single polygon is going to kind of pop up and then this is where our spore is going to grow from. So what I want to do is go into, I want to go into polygon mode. I want to select this guy. I want to put a keyframe here, but what we need to keep in mind is that we're using Cinema 4D's PLA, so point level animation. So I need to make sure that this is on. So again, just to play it safe, put a keyframe at zero. Let's go ahead and go to 60. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure the polygon's selected. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to my matrix extrude and I'm going to change some settings here. So I'm going to put our steps at about 24. I'm going to put our move here at about 20. We're going to leave the rest zero. I'm going to put our scale all across the board, 95, 95, 95. And then I'm going to zero out a rotation. So we don't want any rotation. So with everything else set, I'm going to hit apply. And this guy is going to shoot up, which is what we want. So I, we need to make sure, obviously, with a PLA selected here, I want to put a keyframe. And now we should get some animation here. So there we go. So pretty cool. So what I did, again, you know, trying to keep things simple, you know, keeping it, you know, you know, within the box, um, I used deformers basically. So for the tippy top of this guy here, I used a bulge deformer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a bulge. I'm going to swing this guy up here, just, you know, kind of eyeballing it. I'm going to change our settings a little bit. So just kind of bring it in, just kind of hug the top of this here, maybe about 50. This guy, maybe about 50. Um, and for the Y, probably around 50 as well. Uh, and again, you know, kind of played around with the settings. Um, but what we want to do is now make this guy a child of the plane. And we can actually rename this to Spore. So we want this as our spore goes into the fall off area of this deformer is we want it to kind of start to grow um, as it goes upwards. So I'm going to crank our strength on this. I'm actually going to go to about maybe, oh, 1200. And then again, kind of eyeballing, kind of trying to get some good settings here. Um, we can adjust this. So it's, oh yeah, maybe about that. That might be a little overkill. Maybe bring it down 800, maybe even more 500. So kind of something like that. And so as our geometry kind of grows, it kind of falls into the, you know, gets into the, the area of the deformer here and kind of does its thing. Uh, you know, and if we just quickly experiment, throw this into a, a, a NURBS, you know, and then we're getting some pretty good results here. So that was kind of it for the spore, you know, and then, you know, I went ahead and, uh, you know, I added more deformers. Um, and then as we know, we have kind of this uh, kind of shake, kind of like this, this spazzing, if you will. Um, so that was done with a bend deformer. And I'll quickly show you kind of how I set that up here. So what I did is I got a bend deformer. There we go. Bend. All right. Let's kind of like set this up here. So let's make sure we're just a little bit above the root of the um, the sport here. Kind of change our settings a tad. Bring that in, maybe like 150, 150. And then let's kind of bump this up a little bit. So bring this guy up here. Again, you know, let's make sure we're a little bit floating above the root here. Um, and so let's put this right below the bulge. Let's keep click on keep length because we want that. And then we can kind of start to get an idea. So this was pretty simple as well. So what I did was once kind of the stem of the spore started to grow, um, you know, I started adding keyframes 
um, you know, about this point um, where it just kind of started twitching and doing its thing. So, you know, I would put keyframe here at zero. You know, I would go down maybe two frames, three frames, give or take. I'd go 50. Put a keyframe there as well. Maybe go a couple more frames down and go negative 50. And the cool thing about this is once we open up our keyframes, we'll be able to adjust this. So let's do that. I'm going to go to animation, right click. I'm going to go to show tracks, bring this guy up here and kind of see what we're looking at here. And it happens really, really, really quickly. So, you know, you can go ahead and loop these keyframes, but I believe I just kind of control and dragged the whole kind of the swath of the, uh, the, the group keyframes here. So it kind of goes back and forth. Let's try that once again. All right. Kind of grab all of them again, control, click, drag, just to get kind of a feel of this. Um, and again, you know, it's, it's rough right now. Um, and I believe I took maybe the last one here, kind of zeroed it out. So we kind of tapered off. So it wasn't like an abrupt stop. So this was kind of the gist of it. So, you know, within a matter of minutes, I kind of had this kind of freaking out spore kind of growing from the surface. Um, and I think it worked pretty well. You know, we can definitely add more here. But you get the idea. Um, and it worked. Uh, so what I did was um, brought this into my main scene with the kind of our ground plane. And then I populated there. So um, let's go ahead and check that out. Okay, so let's continue here. Um, as you can see, I, uh, I kind of brought in um, the spore um, with our little landscape here, uh, and I kind of built some stuff out just to quickly show you how I used the MoGraph cloner uh, to populate our scene with the spore. Uh, so if you, you know, you can see I have an additional bend in there as well. I kind of added stuff, um, but you know, we brought some life into this thing. Uh, and that's, you know, roughly how I, I um, kind of built out this spore. Um, and so I wanted to populate these areas. Uh, and so I use the cloner. And if I turn that on, you'll see they kind of, you know, dunk, 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 kind of pop around here. So what I did simply for that was on our landscape here, kind of went to the polygons. And then I just chose a single polygon uh, per location. Um, and then what I did in our cloner was that I added, um, I added our landscape object to our cloner. Um, by changing our mode to object. And then we're gonna drop the object, being the landscape, into here. And then what I did was that when I chose these polygons that I wanted, I selected, I put a set selection uh, on the landscape so that the cloner knows where to populate these guys. Um, so with that in the cloner, I added the selection one, which I named it, keep things simple. And then I use polygon center. So it's only seeing the one individual polygons per location. Uh, and you'll see this is kind of how it happens. So as these things kind of grow on, we know that they're they're doing the exact same thing. There's really nothing natural about this. So I kind of wanted to offset the rotation and I wanted to offset the timing. So I added a random effector to our cloner object and I added a step effector as well to kind of offset the timing on that. So on the random, I just kind of, you know, rotated, you know, along H here until it felt comfortable. Um, and if we turn that on, leave the step for off now, you'll see which kind of rotated a little bit. You know, so they just kind of like go in kind of different directions a little bit, um, but we still have the timing issue. So randomize the rotation, looks good. Uh, and then I used a step effector, added it to the cloner like I showed you. And then what I did was I turned off uh, all of our parameters and I simply went to our time offset and then I just changed it to whatever felt good. And you can kind of see um, how these are kind of offset in the animation themselves. Um, so yeah, the MoGraph cloner and its effectors are a very, very powerful tool. Um, so that is how I did that. Uh, all right, so let's kind of move on here now that we have our guys here. So as we know, this whole kind of logo build is based off this um, these kind of vessels that, you know, grow throughout our environment and then it ends up you know into the company logo of the m the big large m so uh i needed to figure out a way how to do that and um 
I went ahead and decided that, you know, the spline animation is probably going to be our best route. Um, but even on top of that is using X particle spline mesher. Um, X particle spline mesher is a magical tool that everybody needs to use. Um, so I'm going to show you how I did that. So what I did is that uh, I projected splines along the surface uh, for every scene. And each scene had unique splines. I didn't repro repurpose any of the ground vessel splines. Um, so what I did was I needed to turn on snapping. And what I mean is that I needed to turn on spline snapping so that when I did draw the splines on the surface, they were going to project themselves onto the surface. Uh, so what I did with that is that I grabbed our sketch spline sketch tool. And then as you can see, you can kind of draw, um, but our spline disappears because it's not being attached to anything. So I'm going to undo that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit P on my keyboard and then I'm going to enable snap and I'm going to hit P again. I'm going to turn off vertex snap and I'm going to turn on polygon snap because I want our spline to now project onto our landscape surface. And once I start drawing, you're going to kind of see that now this spline is going to live on our landscape, which is super, super cool. Uh, and so what I did with that is that I kind of continued to draw splines. Um, you know, within frame, within camera, whatever I felt was um, gonna feel good in the flow of this. So, you know, this was kind of a starting point for me to kind of get an idea and concept how these vessels are gonna grow. So I mentioned the spline mesher from X particles. So with that, I'm gonna go into X particles. I'm gonna go down to our generator and I'm gonna go to spline mesher, okay? So now we have our spline mesher. And so in order for this to work, you actually have to add your spline into the object source here. So I'm going to plop our spline into there. Uh, I'm also going to change. Uh, I remember I did work and with the B spline and I kept these uniform for the time being. And so we have these, we have these supposed um, vessels that grow, um, but they're not really the prettiest thing to, by default. Um, but we do know that the spline mesher has this amazing tool that you can grow and it's fabulous. Um, so what you can do is that you have a means of uh, adding subdivisions. So we can start off by adding one. Um, I believe I ended using two, which we can use. And then I remember turning on caps because we wanted to have caps at the ends. We never saw the back of the vessels where we saw the front, but we also see that there's really nothing too natural about the shape of these. Um, they just kind of look like, you know, really abstract earthworms. Um, so we don't really want to do that. So uh, inside the spline mesher, we have this size kind of tick down box and we have a funny enough, we have a spline here, uh, which is going to kind of control the shape of it. And out of the box, all I do is just simply bring this down almost to the bottom because I want to leave a little bit of a tip. And then I kind of swing this arm up to get our tangent there like so. And then we're getting a little bit more kind of an organic feel here. And so I'm going to go ahead and turn off our snapping. We don't need that. And then you can kind of see we're getting a little bit of these splines are kind of falling through the floor. Um, I didn't want that so much. So I just simply just kind of brought it up to where I felt comfortable. Um, and that was about it. Um, but yeah, so as you can see, we're using the spline mesher and then now we can kind of grow these, these guys on. And I can turn that off so we can kind of see. And it was really awesome because, um, you know, let's just say we kind of had one size of vessel here doing our thing. I wanted to have another one. So I'm gonna grab our spline tool again, get our sketch. I'm gonna turn on snapping once again so we can kind of snap turn this off for the time being. And then, you know, I want to draw, oh, you know, maybe another one kind of coming in from here, like so. And like maybe another one kind of coming in from here, like so. Uh, and then maybe I wanted a little arm to kind of come off, like so. So again, kind of concepting the idea, but you know, when I started this, I saw this, I'm like, okay, this is definitely the approach I want with this. So um, with some of these seams, I kind of doubled, I copied, um, I'm held, holding down control and dragging, and that's going to make a copy of this. So I'm going to get rid of the old one. I'm going to put in the new spline. I'm going to add that in, and we're going to turn that on. You have this control of your threshold where the, 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 um, the, basically the secondary arm, if you will, of the vessel kind of attaches itself. Um, and so you can kind of smooth that out. Sometimes you have to move the points around, uh, but I didn't really have any issues with that. Um, and it works fantastic. So you can kind of see that it kind of grows on. 
and then we have our secondary arm. And that was a really good start for me. So um, I this is kind of how I built it out. Um, you know, I had a little bit more intricate spline work going on, but this was a great start. Um, and so, yeah, I highly recommend this tool. If you have anything of this nature going on, I definitely recommend the spline measure. And so, okay, let's kind of uh, keep on moving here. I guess we're going to jump into the next scene, and then we can discuss further steps. Okay, now we're going to dig a little deeper into uh, X particles. Um, as you've seen, we kind of manually drew out our splines, um, you know, along surface and kind of projected that um, and then used the spline measure. Um, but you also notice like through the project that um, there's some kind of spline vessel work that's going on that kind of grows through the ether, you know, kind of floating around. Maybe it's fusing or connecting or something like that. So I'm going to quickly go over kind of how I set that up. So we're going to play around with X particles again. Let's get an X particle system here. I'm going to change our emitter to, let's get a circle here. Um, and I'm just gonna rotate this 90 degrees, maybe bring the radius of the actual emitter down just a little bit here. Um, and what we wanna do is we just kinda wanna grow some, some tendrils kind of coming upwards, just kind of randomize a little bit. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna use um, kind of an attraction where the particles are going to come out, create their trails, and they're going to kind of be um, attracted to an object. So we kind of get like a stock, so to speak. So uh, just for uh, to keep things easy, um, I'm just going to put a sphere and this thing will be invisible eventually. Just kind of put it up here somewhere. And uh, we're going to go to our modifiers. We're going to need a couple of modifiers here. So for one, we can get a turbulence. We're definitely going to need that. Then we're going to get an attractor. Uh, and in the attractor, we want to add our sphere because we want our particles to be attracted to the sphere. So it kind of goes in that general direction. Add that there. We can actually hide our sphere because we know that it's going to be heading in that direction. Um, and then in our generators, we are going to get a trail object because we want to create trails once again. And don't forget, we need to add our emitter in there. So quickly, speaking of, let's go to our emitter. Um, let's check out our emission. Since we don't want rate, we just want it to be shot once. Uh, but we don't want a thousand. I'm gonna maybe make like six. We can have six particles shoot out. Uh, and it's at 150 right now. Let's just kind of see how that feels. So a little too uniform. Um, we can kind of break that up a little bit. I think we can probably go into our, um, kind of change our cone angle just to, help break it up a bit. Um, I'm actually going to drop the speed down a little bit so we kind of help get up, get, um, get that turbulence to kind of kick in a bit. I'm going to change my turbulence as well. Um, let's use the, uh, the Perlin noise. That's always kind of a good one. I'm going to bring my scale down to five, maybe bring my strength up to 10. Let's see how that feels. So we're just kind of, uh, building out, um, our little guys here, maybe more strength. We kind of really want to get that kind of kind of distortion in there in the spline. Maybe drop our speed down a bit. Maybe 65. See how that feels. So yeah, we're getting something there. Maybe just a little more turbulence. Let's go 30. I think that's okay for now. It's a little offset, a little randomized. It'll help get the message across. So yeah, let's, um, let's let this grow for a little bit, something like that maybe. And you will see where I'm going with this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the trail. And once again, I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna go to current state to objects. So now that we have these splines, one thing I do want to do is I want to change our um, spline type here. I want to definitely have a B spline here. Maybe put this as uniform. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so we are going to experiment with our spline measure. Um, so let's grab that. Let's go to X particles generator spline measure. And like before, we are going to add our spline into the spline measure. So um, it defaults to zero subdivisions and I'm just going to smooth it out by adding one um, and then kind of what we discussed before our scale. Um, I want to get that tip. So I'm going to grab our spline handle here and just give it a little bit more of a nice little vessely point. Um, turn on caps and um, size maybe around three or so. So as we've um, went through this before, we can grow our spline. Uh, nice fancy little spline there. 
So you, you've seen in the project that I had kind of a um, kind of a, a where they fused a little bit. You can kind of see here. And so what I want to do is I want to have these guys grow and then I want them to meet another one. So they kind of meet halfway, kind of maybe around here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our current spline. I'm going to hold down control. I'm going to drag and I'm going to create a duplicate. So we have a duplicate spline. But what we need to do is that since our order of spline is going from um, kind of down here upwards along the Y, I want to go negative. So I'm going to click on our newly created copy. I'm going to go to point mode. I'm going to right click on this guy. I'm going to go to point order and I'm going to reverse the sequence. All right. So basically now our point order is going to start here and go downwards. But what we need to do is I need to take our spline measure. Again, I'm going to hold control. I'm going to drag and create a copy. So now we have a, a duplicate copy, but I'm going to take our old spline out. So I'm going to right click going to remove and then I'm going to put our new spline in there. So as you can see here, let me hide the spline. We now have these two kind of intersecting like so. And so that's how I kind of created that one shot. Um, and so you can see how I use the particle system to kind of create these vessels, these branches, you know, and so using turbulence and things of that nature, um, you know, I was able to really get some nice uh, movement in there um, and just really populated the scene. Um, and another cool thing that I did with this as well is that I took our splines and then I'm going to actually put this in a group. So they're kind of grouped together, call this spline. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab a displacer, displacer, we're going to plop that right in there, kind of put it at the bottom here. And then I'm going to change a few things. So in the shader tab of our displacer, I want to create a noise. There we go. And I'm actually going to add some animation to this. So we get kind of a little wobbling effect here. Um, let's go back up, maybe drop our height down to five, just so it's not so wacky. Um, and then believe we're going to leave that as is and then we are going to put our direction on planar and let's double check everything here and we can adjust all these as need be um, and then you'll see we should be getting some nice kind of fluid motion uh, let me add some keyframes so we can take a look here so we'll start it there and then a little bit up let's say 60 we'll go there so you'll see now that we kind of get some nice organic motion in there. Um, yeah, so this was really fun to kind of experiment and play with. Um, and then again, you know, we can definitely get some more kind of turbulence in our uh, spline as we're creating them. Uh, but it's it, it's a nice organic kind of feel. So this really brought helped bring it to life. Um, so with that, we're going to go ahead and move on to our next steps. Okay, now we are going to jump into the lovely world of Redshift. Uh, if it wasn't for Redshift, I definitely wouldn't be able to accomplish what I did. Um, it's a very fantastic renderer, uh, and it's got a lot of little, uh, little fun little magic tricks under the hood. Um, and I utilized pretty much all of them. So um, you're going to see I kind of added a couple lights here. Um, add a little depth of feel to the camera. You can kind of see I added a Redshift tag to the camera, rend or, I'm sorry, Redshift uh, camera, and that's this tag. And I wanted to add the bokeh effects, which is some depth of field. So I kind of, I went to uh, our focal distance, my went to our COC radius, and this was kind of an interesting trick per scene um, because I didn't want to get, you know, too, too heavy with the depth of field because it's not really going to sell it. Um, so I kind of played around with stuff and try to keep everything in focus. So um, usually a lower setting between two and four usually worked for what I was doing. So the powerful thing with Redshift is um, the shaders. The shaders really helped um, everything kind of pop throughout this whole thing. And so what I'm going to do is simply kind of start building kind of the basic foundation of what I was doing with shaders. So uh, I'm going to create a new shader here. This is something pretty basic. And we'll start with the um, we'll start with our uh, our vessels here. And so we wanted something that was going to be gnarly, <laughs> I guess is one way of putting it. Uh, and so I, tr again, I try to keep things relatively simple. Um, I wanted to roughen up the specular so it's not sharp. We don't want that, but we kind of have a, a wet, wet-ish kind of look feel to it. So I kept my, my, uh, my reflection and specular around here. Um, same thing with coating, just a little bit coating, um, kind of roughen it up 
to just kind of give it a little bit of a sheen. Uh, and then I use Maxon's noise. So we're going to type in here the Maxon noise. I'm actually going to make a duplicate of this because I'm going to use this twice and I will show you why. So the Maxon noise is going to be plugged into our diffuse color channel. And here we can kind of control um, you know, the, the look that we want uh, for vessels, obviously going to be something sort of a kind of a crimsony kind of red, um, kind of dark um, feel to it. Um, you know, maybe, maybe somewhere around there. And then kind of our secondary color, um, definitely more of the maybe yellowish, fleshy kind of feel to it. Um, and again, we'll play with this. Um, so, and I want to change the noise itself and, you know, by default, uh, Naki is a fantastic um, shader use for, for kind of anything organic, at least to get a feel right off the bat. Um, obviously we can double up on our, our, uh, our texture, you know, mix it up a little bit. Uh, we're not going to go that deep right now. Um, but for anybody that has questions out there, um, you know, afterwards, feel free to reach out, please. Um, so one thing uh, that Wrench Shift's very powerful tool is displacement. We are going to add a displacement node. We are going to add the second um, Maxon Noise node to our displacement. We're going to plug it into the texture um, input and then into our displacement. So now we are going to be getting some displacement, maybe. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change um, our noise again, and we're going to use Naki as well on this. And so we're going to leave the default settings on displacement as is just for the time being. And then why don't we go ahead and put this on our vessel. And I did add in kind of a secondary camera here so we can kind of take a look at what we've got. So let's turn this bad boy on here, run that suit we've got here. Okay, so pretty good color pattern, um, but not pretty because you can see our specular is not broken up. We're not getting any of that. Um, Kind of roughness if you will so what we need to do is we're going to add just a red shift object tag right on our vessels right there and what we need to do is we're going to go to our geometry tab here and we're going to click on we're going to override all this and we're going to turn basically everything on just to try to get something and right off the bat you're seeing we're starting to get some displacement and so this displacement tag is picking up this knocky noise. So we're already getting pretty good results. And it took me, you know, a good handful of hours to really dial in what I wanted. But, you know, we definitely wanted to have a little bit of um, kind of a subsurface-y, fleshy, vessel-y kind of feel to it. And there was a fine balance between that and then our lighting as well. Um, so, you know, I did want to go to the multi-subsurface scattering here. I'm going to turn on one. Kept it around the five to 10 marker. Um, and depending on where the camera was too, because if you were really close to the vessel, um, you don't want to really overshoot on your subsurface because it's going to start looking kind of flat and um, kind of plasticky. We didn't want that. Uh, we kind of wanted to have a, you know, waxiness to it, if you will. So again, we're trying to get some um, really good highlights here, which is going to really make the scene pop. Um, let's go back to our motion camera here too. Um, and you can kind of just start seeing that we're, we're getting these cool highlights. Um, and we can do the same thing as well for our, uh, our, our land, kind of our geo here. So what I'm going to do is simply, since our basic kind of structure is set up here, uh, I'm going to duplicate this material here. Uh, and we're going to plop that onto our geo, which is basically going to be our land. So let's put that there. And um, we're just going to change a few settings. We're also going to add, I'm actually going to duplicate this. So since this displacement tag already exists, I'm just going to hold down control and just put that directly onto our geo because we want displacement on the, on the uh, surface as well. So now that we have this guy, we're just going to kind of change a few settings here. You know, maybe change it to, you know, a Luca or something kind of distressed looking, change the color to, you know, maybe more of a brownish kind of thing, you know, darker, crimsony kind of thing. All right. Do the same thing for our, uh, our displacement here. We don't want that. Let's go back to Luca. And then, you know, just quickly kind of check stuff out here. So yeah, as you can see, our ground is already starting to get some highlights on it. Um, again, control with the lighting, uh, way too hot on the specular. Um, let's maybe check out our, our kind of other angle here on the camera. 
unlock that position. So we're seeing that we're getting this. The only problem here with the displacement is that it's popping upwards. So what I'm going to do is, and I had to do this for a few scenes, but I'm going to drop our new range minimum and maximum. So this is actually going to go to negative. I'm sorry, this is going to go to zero. No, I'm sorry. This is actually going to go to negative one, like I had it, and then going to go to zero. And that should drop this down our surface just a little bit. Yep, as you can see, and we can always go more on that. Uh, but you can see how it's kind of, you know, not getting too much um, kind of penetration here between the, the polygons. So, yeah, okay, so lots of control, uh, very cool stuff. So this was, you know, a foundation for me to start. Um, another cool thing is, too, is that, you know, we can always kind of mess with the scale. Um, I'm just selecting both these Maxon noises here, you know, and like you can make sure the scale's right. Uh, just kind of play around with stuff here. Um, again, you know, we're going to want to adjust this down the line. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's looking pretty okay. Um, it's cool. The displacement, um, there's there's a lot to it, but uh, once you get a handle on it, it's uh, it's a very, very, very powerful tool. Um, so yeah, you know, a lot of nice surface detail. So we are going to switch gears, and now we are going to discuss um, kind of the fibers uh, and the webbing that you kind of see throughout. So I've kind of created um, kind of a, a spline particle system. Um, that we populate throughout the scene so you kind of have you know this organic flow of kind of material flowing around and you know you know populated around the spores and stuff so um i'm going to open up a new scene uh let's do that we can get rid of this guy we can put this guy away and uh we're gonna open up the world of x particles so let's get an x particle system and i'm going to change our emitter to a circle and i'm just going to flip this 90 degrees so we're kind of going upwards here uh, and basically what i want to do is use the trail uh, generator to kind of create uh, spline trails um, and uh, that's going to kind of generate these fibers that you see throughout so uh, i'm going to go under generators here and i'm going to grab trail and then our trail is looking for an emitter so i'm going to grab our emitter and plop it in there and there's a few things I'm going to change on our emitter as well. I'm going to go to the emissions tab. I'm going to change our rate to shot because we don't want to constantly shoot out. We just want one shot. Um, and I'm going to change this to about 15. Um, so that should shoot out. Bloop. There you go. So that's pretty okay looking. Um, I'm going to drop the speed down to about 50. Something like that. There we go. And I'm also going to change the uh, cone angle a little bit just just give it a little bit of more kind of diversity here um, just so it's kind of you know spreading out a little bit okay so we want to mess this up totally mess it up so I'm gonna go into my motion modifiers modifiers motion modifier and we want to grab a turbulence because we kind of want to mess this up a little bit so um, I'm gonna change some of these default settings the scale I'm gonna put about five the strength I'm gonna put about 10, just to kind of see, and we're gonna leave everything else as is. So let's press play and see how that looks. So that's pretty cool, looks pretty organic, looks pretty nice, you know. Um, actually, maybe bring the scale down just a tad. But this will be a brief example. So this is gonna be kind of some, you know, fibrous um, organic life, you know. So let's say, hypothetically, <laughs> that I'm happy with this. Uh, so I'm gonna say this is cool. So I'm gonna select our trail object. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna to go to current state to object. And you'll see that this just created a spline object for us. I'm gonna get rid of that tag. We can actually hide or get rid of our, uh, our particle system. And now we have splines. So if we grab our points there, you can see it's, it's alive, so to speak. Now, basically I kind of made a hero, one of these that looked really nice and I populated that throughout each scene. Uh, I may have done a couple variations where I took the magnet tool and kind of, you know, move points around to make it different, but I had one hero one. So the cool thing about this is that with Redshift, another powerful um, element is it's, um, it's kind of a hair system. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to right click on our spline object here. I'm going to go to Redshift tags, Redshift object and that's gonna show up. And now you have this new tab that arrived called Curve. So I'm gonna select Hair Strands. You have all these other ones, but I normally work in Hair Strands. And you're gonna see, if I press Render, that this guy is gonna show up now in the render view. As default, it's not gonna be that pretty, but now you basically have like an object. And it actually works really cool. 
Um, so what we can do is, again, kind of again with the spline, we can bring our spline down, give it a little bit of a tip, kind of do something like that. And then you can obviously adjust your thickness. So it defaults to kind of this, this kind of green. Um, but you can put any material on it. I basically just made like a, a an off white material with a little bit of specular and then just plopped it on there and it was fine throughout. It reacted really well with the lights. So what I had with these guys was that I kind of had them kind of flowing. So there's no life to it. It's just very stiff right now. So in the spline, I'm going to grab a, um, a displacer and I'm going to plop that displacer onto, oops, sorry, displacer onto the trail and we are going to add a noise effect to our um, spline here. So you can see that it's already kind of distorting, but if I move it, nothing's happening. So I'm gonna click on our noise from the displacer. I'm gonna go to the animation speed. I'm gonna add one, and we should be getting a little bit of life on that. So there you go, getting a little bit of life. So, I mean, it's really that easy. I did that in a matter of a couple minutes and you know, then I, you know, plop these where I wanted in frame in the camera and that was good to go. So, um, again, another powerful, um, um, tool of Redshift, uh, worked great. And then obviously with C4D's displacer, we brought everything to life. And then we, uh, we, we kind of already have, um, this nice little animated element, you know, we can always kind of bring down the height on this. So it's not as much, you know, we can always make it a little bit bigger. So it's not as a uh, kind of crunchy looking. You know, and it's going to kind of smooth all that stuff out. Yeah, looks pretty nice. Nice fluid motion. So cool. So, all right, with that, let's go ahead and jump into the next scene. Alrighty, so before we get into the actual final stages of everything here, kind of towards the end, um, I wanted to open up uh, the last scene. Uh, so kind of our big reveal for the logo. Uh, I kind of wanted to show you how I had things broken down. So as you can see, the scene is, you know, much more in depth, much more intricate. Um, you know, some of my shaders I'll bring in, uh, you know, like vessel uh, for one, you know, I actually have two. So I kind of wanted to, you know, kind of switch up, make sure there was kind of color variations among all the vessels. Uh, so we had a darker one, we had a lighter one. Um, you can see that I added in some Fresnel uh, to our emissions uh, to give it kind of that rim effect. Um, you know, some triplanar nodes to kind of make sure that our projections are all nice. Um, some bump um, and, and all that. So, you know, I, I, I took a little bit more time with these, um, but I just kind of wanted to show you some of that. But you can kind of see how I have all of this set up, um, just sort of this world. Uh, and it's it's pretty rudimentary when you pull out, but you know, um, ultimately when you actually see the uh, the ending um, shot itself, it looks it looks pretty okay, it looks pretty cool. Um, but you can see, you know, talking about our fibers, you know, I did build out like kind of like this one hero kind of fiber um, that we can all see here, um, and I got a whole swath of them, um, and then I have the one displacer to kind of animate things, um, and then this uh, we have all of our you know, vessels growing around the object. So basically I took the logo um, and I created geometry out of it from a spline. Uh, and then I used that geometry um, as a basically kind of a, a collision so that the uh, X particles spline and all that stuff can uh, kind of grow around it um, and adhere to it. Um, so that's kind of how I got the, uh, the M2 exist with all of these. And it was a pretty tedious task, but you know, ultimately, um, you know, it was it, it was really not that bad. Um, but you can see how I have the fibers kind of strewn about. I have all my lighting, um, depending on you know what's what's going on, what it's focusing on. Some of these lights are for the the land or the groundscape. Some of them are for the M only. Um, and you know, you can see in the image that uh, you know we get you know nice specular, nice rim light. Um, pick up some of that diffuse as well. Um, but yeah, all in all, um, I think it came out pretty okay and uh, considering the amount of time there was and, you know, the power of Redshift, uh, and of course the power of cinema, um, with all of its wonderful and beautiful tools. Okay. So, um, you know, with that, let's go ahead, let's jump over to, um, After Effects. I'm just going to give you a quick rundown on some of the post work I did. Okay, so here we are in After Effects. Um, and this was kind of where I compiled everything. Uh, this is where it all came together. We started to composite, kind of add, 
you know, some color, a little bit of levels here and there, some post effects. Um, I even, you know, you'll see some of the particles floating around. Some of the particles were kind of cloner objects uh, kind of floating around, but I also added some kind of 2D uh, dust plates, stuff like that, just to give it a little bit more atmosphere. Um, and those helped uh, really kind of sell the shots. Um, and I also did stuff kind of like, um, you know, like some post glows. I know that we kind of have these these kind of electrical impulses, especially at the end. I kind of wanted to really give it a little bit more life. Um, so, you know, you can always see these electrical impulses kind of growing throughout. And, you know, I put that together um, kind of as a separate scene, uh, separated the M, the vessels, um, and you kind of see how I did it here where we just had a simple animated texture um, just kind of kind of going up, you know, and I just kind of had them looped. And you can see I just rendered it against black. So um, in After Effects, um, just kind of composited over. I believe my blending mode was color dodge and just added some glows, uh, kind of played with that, around with that. I also used um, Magic Bullet Looks uh, for some kind of final leveling uh, in regards to a little bit of lens distortion. So we kind of had distortion on the on the uh, the edge here, uh, a little bit of color correction um, on top of the looks. Uh, and then, you know, a few other things, some chromatic aberration to kind of uh, really sell it. Um, so with that, um, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to check this out. And I believe that's going to be bringing this presentation to a close. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for checking that out. I hope you enjoyed the presentation, uh, and I look forward to the next one. Um, for those interested, you can also check out my social media. You can find me on Twitter, um, at Andy Lefton. Um, I'm also on Instagram, at Andy Lefton, uh, one word. Um, and I also have a website, uh, at andylefton.com. Uh, and I do recommend, if you get a chance, check out Mad Microbe. Um, you go to their website at madmicrobe.com. Uh, you can kind of see what we're doing over there. Um, but I do recommend it. So I appreciate it, and thanks again.